Hello there, my fellow amateur heretics, and welcome to another episode of Warhammer 40k Lore. Today we will resume our forbidden forays into the lore of the Chaos Cults. Not very long ago, I returned to this overall topic and talked about a rather infamous cult known as the Pilgrims of Hate. Definitely a rather unsavory bunch, and also one I said I would make a second video on. So, here we are today. Well, the first time we talked about their history and some of their exploits, today we shall describe their doctrine, their structure, their goals, and more. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? At the very core of the beliefs of the Pilgrims of Hate is the nihilism of spirit, utter hopelessness, and despair for humanity's true place in the universe as they perceive it, which is a blind creature utterly at the mercy of a deadly galaxy and a hungering warp. To them, civilization, love, faith, reason, morality, honor are all lies and stillborn dreams, strangled at birth by uncaring and implacable reality. The answer, as far as they are concerned, is total destruction. The violent self-immolation of humanity's carefully wrought web of lies and deceit. It is to embrace the madness, the suffering and the despair which are humanity's only real truth. It is to hate and kill and tear down until nothing is left. Those that are brought into the cult are selected chiefly for a seed of bitterness and resentment that they carry within them. Some remembered slight or injustice, incidents which are only too common in the crush of imperial society. The cult will work on this flaw to erode the recruits' inhibitions, morality and conscience to the point where the hatred and the sense of outrage and betrayal consumes him. As he progresses through the cult's outer layer of deceit and lies, the initiate is granted hideous revelations and subjected to horrific suffering and demonic rituals. These are designed to strip away his sanity and damn him entirely, leaving him either dead, deranged or irrevocably tainted by the corrupting power of chaos. Those few cultists that survive long enough or show particular promise are taken under the wing of a false prophet and directly tutored in the arts of the sorcerer and the demagogue. It is then that their masters show them that even the worship of chaos is a lie, just a tool to be used, as the beings of the warp also use them. If the aspirants survive such dark wisdom and the dangers of their tutelage, then they may become false prophets in turn, and carve their own bloody path across the stars. In structure, the Pilgrims of Hate are considered the very epitome of what some theorists in the Holy Ordos refer to as a cancer cult. These are introduced to a population much like a disease, and spreads from a single point of infection. The machinations of a false prophet work to corrupt an ever-widening circle of victims and endanger the lives and souls of all those around them. The growth of the cult also follows a disease-like cycle. First the infection, then a period of secrecy while the cult grows in number and power analogous to an incubation period. Finally there is the terminal stage, as the cult, having reached a critical mass, runs rampant in a destructive frenzy. The structure of the cult, particularly in the early stages of the infection, is centered entirely on its charismatic leader. These false prophets often masquerade in the beginning as genuine imperial cult pilgrims, traveling preachers, or even charitable entrepreneurs, who gather the downtrodden to them. They secretly gain their first converts by appealing to those who feel betrayed or ignored by the local authorities, and in particular by the Adeptus Ministorum. Thus, with their first followers in hand, they coat their spiritual poison with honeyed words and false truth, dragging their victims down in a spiral of damnation. Once they are secretly and safely established in an area, they will found a cult cell selecting new members from the dross of humanity and those already downtrodden or embittered, fanning the flames of their victims' hatred and preying on their grief and despair. 
and before the followers realize it, they have lost their souls to the lies of the cult, and are plunged into a world of inhumanity, madness, and the worship of chaos. Once the cell is fully established and has achieved its own dreadful momentum, the false prophet will withdraw, sinking beneath the levels of secrecy, while chosen converts continue expanding the cult by drawing new followers to the cause. Protected by this outer ring, the false prophet directs matter from behind the scenes while he begins the real work. The establishment of a temple to the warb where he can work his sorcery and summon foul entities from beyond to do his bidding. The false prophet orchestrates this descent into madness, thriving off the destructive spiral of chaos worship and channeling the hatred of the cult at targets of his choosing. It is then that a nightmare for the wider world begins in earnest. What may have been just disquieting rumors and a rash of mysterious disappearances and suspicious activity will erupt into a campaign of terror the likes of which few can imagine. Wanton slaughter, foul murder, and atrocities of every kind imaginable are loosed upon the world. Suicidal attacks by insane cult zealots coincide with terrorist attacks, and even worse the unleashing of demonic forces against faith and state. Geared to cause indiscriminate damage as well as destabilize any counterattack by the planetary authorities, this kind of violence quickly becomes uncontrollable, even by the prophet himself. Like a pack of rabid monsters, the pilgrims of hate savage and attack all they encounter. Now acting entirely on their own murderous drive to destroy and sow terror, the cult neither relents nor runs away even if confronted by superior forces. On the contrary, they will revel in self-destruction, content to damage, kill and terrify as much as possible before they themselves are finally destroyed. It is at the end of this final explosion of carnage that, unless the Holy Ordos can find and kill the false prophet, he will discard his insane and corrupted flock and run away to begin the entire process anew somewhere else. Although they may go by many names, titles and identities, the false prophet is indeed the most apt name for these liars and bringers of ruin. Each one is a powerful and charismatic leader a deceiver steeped in death and with the blood of multitudes on their hands. Each one is a powerful chaos sorcerer who has at their disposal many secrets and forbidden knowledge, gleaned both out of their depraved crusades and the bartered utterances of the demonic. These faithless killers have no room in their hearts for anything other than bitterness and hatred for the lies others call the truth and while they are more than willing to give the demon their due, they scorn the true worship of the ruinous powers. They see the dedication to such entities as only more layers of lies, albeit acknowledging that the ruinous powers are a bit more generous as masters than the so-called corpse emperor. Thus, they only embrace chaos as a means to an end, that end being the power to tear down the edifice of the Imperium. Reckless in the display of their powers, it is their particular want to use the warp to further corrupt and enslave their followers, simply for the sadistic pleasure of doing so. Woe betide any imperial servant falling into their clutches. And so, the false prophets of the Pilgrims of Hate are a terrible enemy, and they have claimed the lives of many inquisitors and thousands and thousands of loyal imperial servants. Combating them is the sworn and absolute duty of the Ordo Calixis of the Inquisition. Although thankfully relatively few, and the Ordo Malleus is currently tracking about 30 of them, that number is in dispute. And the false prophets may seem to be slowly but steadily grow in number. While each one seems to follow only their own erratic and destructive path, without any plan or recourse to others of his kind, some in the highest levels of the Inquisition fear that there may be a single guiding hand behind all of them. Some heretical arch-architect whose ultimate plan has yet to be revealed. The location, the pursuit and the destruction of the Pilgrim of Hate cells are regarded as a high priority for the Conclave Calixis. This focus is in no small part because of the cult's proven ability to create a large-scale carnage, 
and the more subtle danger they pose to the long-term spiritual and moral health of the masses it infiltrates. The cult is also considered highly dangerous to the stability of the Calixis sector itself, as it is one of the, thankfully, few cults and heretical organizations with a proven ability to operate sector-wide, and maybe even beyond. It is even willing to actively seek out and attack forces of the Inquisition. The truth, the full extent of which is hidden from most, is that despite the Holy Ordo's many victories against the cult, the false prophets that remain at large are growing demonstrably more powerful and diverse as a group. It seems evident that the sheer abandon and disregard that they hold for their own lives and the lives of their followers creates something of a state of rapid natural selection among them, with only the strongest prospering and doing so very quickly. For the higher circles of the Inquisition, this reckless abandon raises a simple but disturbing question. Given their steady increase in power and their desire to destroy above all others, is there anything these mad dog cult leaders would not do if they possessed the power? The implications of such an answer are terrifying. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about this very nihilistic and destructive chaos cult, the Pilgrims of Hate, for today. Definitely one of the worst types of chaos cult, not that there's any good ones, as their mission is more unpredictable than most. After all, when your job is just to cause terror and damage, one can never know when and where they'll strike. Of course, there are many other chaos cults out there as well, so while we are finished with these guys, I will return to the topic in the near future again. What about you though? What are your thoughts on these wackos? Do share them or any questions you may have in the comments below. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching to the end and have an awesome and healthy day. The Emperor Protects.